Hey, welcome back. So for this video, we're going to go ahead and create this handle right here. Notice we'll be using two images, the front profile, the right profile, and we'll be using those two images to create this handle right here. So let's go ahead and get started. So for step one, we want to make a copy of this document right here. So go ahead and click on it and then make a copy. For step two, we're going to create a part studio. So go ahead and select here and click on create part studio. For step three, we're going to go to the front plane and insert an image. So go ahead and select the front plane, select sketch, reorient. We're going to select insert image. And we're going to select the front profile. Now we're going to sketch out this profile like this and go ahead and click accept. Let's go ahead and check our units real quick. Let's make sure we're in inches. So now that we're in inches, go ahead and click accept. We're back on sketch one. And now we're going to dimension this out. So max length over here, the height will be a value of five. We're going to place this point at a distance of five from the origin. We're going to drag this below the origin. So let's go ahead and zoom in. So notice this line is below the origin. And we're going to place that line at a distance of 0.125 from the origin. So once again, it is below the origin. Let's go ahead and accept this. Reorient. Now we're going to do the sketch on the right plane. Let's go ahead and click sketch. We're going to insert another image and we're inserting the right profile. And go ahead and just draw out that rectangle and we'll adjust it shortly. So the height will have a value of five. And then this point will be at a certain distance from the origin with a value of 5.125. So now we're going to make this line coincidental to this point right here. So click on this. This point is where the right plane and this line intersect. Go ahead and click coincidental. And our images are superimposed. And now this other image, the bottom of the handle is right at the origin. And go ahead and accept. For step seven, we're renaming this to handle front. And sketch two will be handle right. For step seven, we're creating the spine on the right plane. So let's go ahead and hide our images. So we're on the right plane, so go ahead and select this sketch. And we're on spline. One end of the spline will be at the left of the origin and the other spline point will be connected to the origin itself. And go ahead and click escape to set the origin. Let's drag these out. We're gonna need construction lines. We're going to place this at a value of 4.525, oops. And it's going to be to the left of the origin by clicking on this line here with a value of 0.4. We're also going to add these dimensions here. So this blind point will be 0.5 inches away. And it'll be vertically away with the value of 1.275. So just right now. So this spine point will be 0.23 inches away. And it'll be, and we'll place a value of 1.725 for this value here. So make sure you add these units and you'll be good to go. And let's change the name to handle spline 2 da Handle spline 2 da And accept. For step two, we're going to create a new plane. So let's go like this, select plane. We're going to click on curve point. We're selecting this point here, and then this section here. And this will be called top profile sketch plane and accept. Actually, let's click back on this, let's edit. 
We're going to click flip normal. Notice the name is now up top. So go ahead and accept. Let's go ahead and hide our top view, our front view, and our right side. So notice we just hit top front and right planes. For step 11, we're adding a bottom profile sketch plane. So select plane again, click on curve point, select the origin, and then select this line here. And go ahead and select, oops, click select normal. And it's called bottom profile sketch plane. And go ahead and accept. For step 12, we're creating this ellipse on the plane. All right, so we're going to go ahead and hide this bottom plane. Let's go ahead and select this plane, select sketch. We're going to draw an ellipse. And we're going to place it centered here to go up vertically. And the width doesn't matter, we'll adjust that right now. All right, so select dimensioning tool. So the width should have a value of 0.875. And the height value will have a value of 1.625. And it's going to be called top ellipse. So rename top ellipse and accept. Step 13, we're going to go to the bottom profile sketch plane. So go ahead and hide the top profile, so the bottom one, and hide the ellipse. All right, so go ahead and click on this, sketch plane, select the ellipse. Let's go to our origin, and notice it is placed vertically, so make sure it has a vertical constraint, and the width does not really matter yet. All right, so the height value, or the width value, will be 0.875. And the width value will have a value of 1.125. And this is bottom ellipse. You go ahead and accept. So you should have created these two. We're going to be using these in the next sketch. So for step 14, we're going to go to our right side. So right side view. Let's show our handle right. And now we're going to show our top ellipse, bottom ellipse, our right side view, our right plane. So go ahead and create a sketch on the right side. We're going to rename it as right side guides. And we're going to use spline points this entire time. So go ahead and place spline points. So now we're going to use our pierce tool. So go ahead and deselect spline. Select the pierce tool right here. Let's go ahead and angle this a little bit. So you're going to select this point and the bottom of this ellipse here. And that should be pierced. Now we're going to go to the top. We're going to do the same thing, our dot, and then our ellipse. And that's our spline point. For step 16, we're going to add these dimensions. So before we do, let's move this a little bit. Place a construction line on the spline handle. Let's go to our right plane view, zoom in. So click this line and the spline handle. And we're gonna add a value of 50 degrees. And we'll be doing the same thing down here. So go ahead and add a construction line to this handle. And we're going to add a value of 25 degrees between this line and this bottom line here. So now we're going to add another spline down in this area. So go ahead and zoom in. 
So it's going away. And we're done here. So now we're going to use our pierce constraints to go to select this point, select the bottom ellipse, and select pierce. Let's go back up to the top into the same, select this point, our ellipse, and select pierce. Let's go to our spline handle, let's move it out a little bit. So we're going to place a construction line between this point and this or this point here. Oops. Select that, make it a construction line. We're going to do the same for the bottom. So I'm going to add a construction line to this point here, to this spline handle. So this will be placed at a value of 25 degrees from this bottom area. And then our top handle will be vertical. So I'm moving around this handle right here because we need a vertical constraint. It's looking kind of awkward, so let's move this around a little bit. Or if anything, let's just delete that. And yeah, let's delete this one. So we'll just leave it like that. All right, for step 19, let's just check to see if our framework looks like this. So let's go ahead and click Accept. And this is what we should get. Our ellipse, ellipse, and then our right side guides. For step 20, we're on the front plane, and we're creating this spline profile right here. Let's go to the front plane. Select our front view. Sketch, front view. Click on the spline. And we also need to show our handle front. All right, let's get started. So I'll just click away. Notice I'm adding all of these spline points right here. Whoops. Let's make sure we get rid of this relationship right here. This horizontal one. Should be no relationships at the moment. Now we're, gonna, we're going to call this handle spline 2db. So rename handle spline. 2db and accept. Oops, go back. We're still working on it. All right, so let's go ahead and pierce the bottom piece. So I'll click on this, click on the bottom ellipse, and we're selecting pierce right here. For step 22, this one's going to be kind of interesting. So let's go up and try this. All right, so go ahead and click on this point, select Project. So now we have this piece here. I select this point, and we're going to add a horizontal relationship. And we're also going to make this coincidental to this ellipse here. And we go back to our front view. These are the relationships that you should have right here. And we're good to go, so go ahead and accept. For step 23, we're going to project our curve. So we have the edge of handle spline 2DA and 2DB. All right, so go ahead and click on this drop down menu, select projected curve. First sketch is handle 2DA, and the second one is 2DB. We just created this curve right here. So go ahead and click accept. And the two curves have just been united. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to use a mirror tool. We have part mirror. We're selecting this curve right here. Our mirror plane will be our right plane. We just mirrored the projected curve, so go ahead and accept. All right, so let's hide this image, this other image. We should have that. Let's go ahead and hide our front and right plane. Let's hide our bottom plane. This is all we should have right now. We're going to go ahead and loft this right now. So for step 26, click on Loft. We're going to click on this top profile and this bottom ellipse. And now we're going to add guides and continuity. We're going to select our two curves and our two splines. And we just created our handle. 
So go ahead and click on accept. And now you can use the mass properties tool to check your work. So go ahead and click on mass properties, select your part. You should have a volume right here in inches squared. And then if we go to our self check, we can now check our value with whatever appears on here. So check the value that is closest to whatever you created. And you should have the correct answer. Anyways, thanks for watching. Check out the other videos.